Hello everybody, my name is Ratnos, and welcome to Zaskarn, the uh, sixth boss of Avarice. This is heroic testing uh, that was recorded a little bit earlier today, uh, and it was pretty cool boss. There's quite a lot going on here. So you see we've got some world markers around. You can ignore the moon world marker. All the other ones, there are six world markers around the boss arena, and they're each on one of these statues. Now... Each statue at periodic points throughout the fight, the boss will activate the nearest one, two, or three statues, and they will just blast out fire. Uh, and so that's something that we're thinking about for most of this fight. The boss also does this shrapnel bombs mechanics where he throws out four shrapnel bombs, uh, and the it's a huge physical hit when you walk over them, uh, and then a nasty physical dot as well. So uh, that seem, it seems like a tank job. You have an, Whoever's not tanking the boss, run and grab them. Uh, so then... The boss does this blast wave into activate imminent destruction combo. Imminent destruction is the thing that activates that purple diamond statue. And when a statue is activated with imminent destruction, it does three increasing radius blast waves that you can just see there at the top of the screen that basically one shot you if you're standing in it, you will, you will die. Uh, and so as the fight goes on, more and more statues are activated, but it's always the closest statues to the boss. Uh, that are chosen. So again, here you see I'm popping defensives and running over those bombs. If those bombs go unsoaked for 30 seconds, uh, they explode and kill the whole raid, basically. So uh, you want somebody to walk over them. They're physical damage, so they're boppable, they're bubbleable. You know, you can't immune them, but it's a big upfront physical hit, so you do want to be really careful. Now the boss also activates these dragon fire traps on the ground, which leave behind a nasty d a magic dot on every on people that are standing in them. You can see our shaman there has two stacks and is ticking down. Uh, they're really good candidates for mass dispel if people are getting stacks of them. But you would ideally rather not get stacks of them as well, which means that throughout the fight you want to make sure you're not getting knocked into them. So here's the next destruction coming out. You can see uh, I'm popping a bunch of defensives here because I'm standing in. I stood in one of those uh, circles and then I ran away from the next few of these statues exploding. Uh, but I, I made it, I tanked one hit and was okay with all my defensives there. Uh, but yeah, now you can see there's a lot of traps on the ground. Those traps also get activated by these golems that the boss summons. The boss will summon golems from various parts of the room, and they will just run around and try to activate traps. You can interrupt them, you can grip them, you can stun them, uh, and you want to do that. And then when you kill them, they drop a, you can right click on their bodies, and then left click on a trap, and then use your extra action button, and you will deactivate the trap. So by doing this, you can keep certain parts of the room clear. You are still getting more traps activated just because the boss naturally activates some, uh, and he naturally activates more than you can clear. Uh, but you can keep certain critical points in the room clear. So here you can see now we've got golems spawning. We've got the golems running around to the edge of the room. We're, we're interrupting, gripping them, uh, keeping them in the center. And now the boss is low enough that he's activating three statues, right? So a, a full half of the room here, uh, by the time this third biggest explosion comes out, is going to be hit by this next thing. So we use the Blast Wave knockback to get sent to the other side of the room. Uh, and now we are dropping our traps. or we're, we're getting traps activated right under boss. So you can see there's stacks of debuff now on a few players. Uh, and those players are in some danger. Once again, we have uh, traps here. I'm going to clear these ones with Bop uh, is my idea. You can see I'm still taking damage here, just fire damage uh, over the course of the fight. Uh, but the physical damage, at least, I'm immune to. And... From this point, it's we, we were able to kill the boss, but there was a lot of stuff that got us uh, throughout the day on this one. This, it took us pretty much the full hour of testing. Uh, we could have killed this a little bit. Uh, we could have probably killed it after like 40 minutes, but we, we still wanted to test some stuff. Uh, and yeah, it's an interesting fight. It's really cool. The tank side of things, the boss is also putting a stacking fire dot on the active tank. So... Basically, I was generally doing bombs, and then I was taunting boss to reset the stacks of that fire from my co-tank. Uh, and then my co-tank was generally tanking the boss, but was sometimes getting bombs, especially if there were ones close to boss. Every time the boss spawns bombs, uh, it's four bombs, and they explode 30 seconds after they're spawned. So you do need to go and get them pretty quick, but you do have a little bit of time, right? Like you see, I've been kind of slow with this set, and there's one still over there. It's starting to get pretty close to exploding. You can see it's doing a little animation. I assume it'll have like a clock above it probably by the time this actually comes out, but uh, it was, yeah, not too hard to to make sure we got those bombs. They did do a lot of damage though, so Paladin seemed really good for that. Paladin, uh, I was just playing Paladin today because I wanted to try it out. I played Druid yesterday, uh, Paladin today, because uh, first of all, I was playing two-piece, two-piece. That seemed like something that would be good for a while during Prague and pretty synergistic, so I was doing that. And also it seemed really good on this fight. 
because you have all these ranged abilities you can use while you're going to clear bombs. You can ward a glory yourself. You don't need to like death strike the boss or hit the boss for rage uh, to fuel your own defensive stuff. Uh, you could just stay at range and still get most of your defensive value and also like drop a consecrate before you run into each of the uh, bombs and live pretty easily there. So it seemed like a pretty well-suited tank to this bomb job on the fight, not to mention Bop and Bubble being really clutch uh, on this fight too. So that was uh, Ziskarn. Hope you've enjoyed this look at the boss. Uh, sixth boss in the raid in the dungeon journal and one that I'm quite excited for. It was quite hectic, uh, but pretty fun. Felt pretty cool to like set up getting knocked in a good direction away from the explosions, uh, manipulating which statues were going to get activated. Doing the bombs was pretty, pretty rewarding as well. Uh, so that's that fight. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.